Well, and not the, the Palestinian ambassador was actually very pragmatic, uh, was he not? I mean, he said the resolution may help save the two-state solution. What I find personally annoying in the speech, as well as many other resolutions, is the notion that the Palestinians have agreed to a two-state solution many times over, and damn, it's only the settlements that made it impossible. And of course, when you look at the entire history, from Balfour to Peel to partition in 47, to all subsequent efforts at agreements, Camp David, Olmert, even with Netanyahu, you see that at the core of the conflict is what he very uh, gently called justice for the Palestinian refugees, which is a code name for, we still want all of Palestine. We still want it to be fully Arab. We Millions don't... of returnees coming yes. back to their homes in Yafo. So and fundamentally I've... throughout history, the Arab Palestinians have never accepted the two-state solution as the United Nations envisioned, as in the Jewish state and the Arab state. So the settlements certainly don't send a message of goodwill, but they are reversible, and they are not the reason we do not have a two-state solution. The reason to date has been the inability of the Arab Palestinians to actually say, yes, you, the Jewish people, have a right to be here too. Your right is not superior or exclusive. Our right is not superior and exclusive, so let's share. They have not been able to say that to date. All right, Inad. While everyone from opposition and from the coalition was shouting Gewalt and this is a terrible thing, this is a disaster for Israel and so on, you actually had an interesting and very well publicized uh, take on the positive aspect of the UN resolution as it relates to Western Jerusalem. Could you explain to our viewers? Yes, the purpose of the resolution was really to emphasize the illegality of the settlements. The whole resolution is about trying to cement in international law that the settlements are illegal. As a result, the, uh, the resolution takes pains to emphasize what is not legal and therefore kind of emphasizes what is legal. So the resolution calls everything beyond the Green Line, beyond the armistice lines, including Jerusalem, illegal. It calls it occupied Palestinian territory. This is clearly something that does not make us happy. But it does mean that it recognizes West Jerusalem, and of course Israel within the armistice lines, as legal. And what this does is this is the most resounding United Nations Security Council affirmation of the idea that West Jerusalem is legal Israel and therefore can serve the capital of Israel and the place for all the embassies. And I wrote that this could be a legal basis for a Trump administration to say, look, no country in the world disputes that West Jerusalem is legal and is Israel. And therefore, in moving the U.S. Embassy there, we're not doing anything that is very dramatic. And I think that is one unintended uh, consequence of uh, this resolution. Until this moment, there was always kept the fiction of Jerusalem as the corpus separatum, uh, as Resolution 181 of the General Assembly was, the partition one. But when you call East Jerusalem, which was also part of the corpus separatum, you call it Palestinian, you're essentially saying it's no longer a separate area, it's Palestinian, it's Palestinian occupied territory. Uh, granted, we don't like that, but it kills the corpus separatum concept, which means that it should also be killed for West Jerusalem. We cannot have a situation where Israel is judged by 1947 and the Palestinians are given the benefit of 67. Either both sides have no rights in Jerusalem okay. or both sides get their rights and all countries should move their embassies to West Jerusalem, which no one disputes is legally Israel's.